Welcome back, friends. My name is John Corbin Goldsberry, and as always, your host for another month of Withian Stone Stories. This is episode two, August of 2019. August is an interesting month, kind of the middle of the sol- summer doldrums, so to speak. And it's good that we could stir ourselves from our routine. And what a better way to break from the routine than a day at the beach. If you go down the hill to the south of the green, there are numerous roads leading to the school and the harbor, and others just out onto the wild, windswept cliffs, populated with bright little cottages and contented sheep. There are lots of beautiful beaches down those roads, tucked into the little coves. Many are perfect for family spots with days of drippy ice cream and sandy blankets and salty lips, long stretches of fine white sand, rock pools that the children can explore with delight, and dramatic offshore rocks that catch the incoming waves and hurl them up into the sky. Jen and I had our own favorite secluded beach, that we often had to ourselves, and we spent many a fine morning walking hand in hand through the surf, the cool water ebbing and flowing over the warm sand beneath our feet. It was on this beach that I said a story, the last one I ever read to her, and I'd like to share it with you today. It's told from the perspective of innocence and youthful exuberance of our resident nature sprites, Isabella and Corby, who I introduced in last month's episode. While they're not major figures in the story of our village, they are significant nonetheless, and I feel an an occasional look into their lives can bring mine into perspective. They frequent the beach often, or at least I see them there, so it seemed the perfect time to tell a little story of Isabella and Corby's Day at the Beach. Isabella smiled and closed her light blue eyes. She listened to the fuzzy, hissy sound of the water retreating over the sand to the sea and scrunched her toes into the cool damp, awaiting the next wave to swell around her ankles. Overhead, a pair of gulls wheeled and cried and dove looking for their breakfast. What she listened for, however, came not from her ears, from somewhere inside her, just behind her heart. We're here, the voices told her, but not there yet. See you soon. The very thought made her float just above the surf. The rhythmic splash of bare feet on wet sand bore down upon her. Look what I found, Bella. She broke with her reverie and cocked her head over her left shoulder as Corby, her raven-haired, might-as-well-be twin brother, stopped just short of knocking her backwards into the ocean. He might be a bit on the untamed side, but he always seemed to know just what would make her smile. The two were indeed mirror images of each other, just from two different mirrors. Both had delicate fairy-like features. Both stood nose-to-nose and always had. Neither like shoes, and as such were perpetually barefoot, and most importantly, both were inseparable from each other. Isabella, however, had strawberry blonde hair that shone like gold in the sun, milky skin with a blush of rose, and the aforementioned sky blue eyes. She always liked to wear her favorite dress with the gossamer trails of aqua blue and green that seemed to float around her. Corby was in diametric harmony to her, with deep black hair that reflected rainbows of light like his namesake's wings. 
His eyes were emerald green and seemed to glow from within, from their own fire. His skin was smooth and soft, but tanned brown from the constant sun, and he hated being trapped indoors. Most often he wore an oatmeal-colored smock that hung down just above his knees, his nod to clothing, which, when he thought about it, he usually put on. For either one of them, no day was truly an adventure it should be without the other. They loved each other without question, and naturally as their own heartbeats. So when Corby held something up at approximately the distance of her nostrils, she saw only enthusiasm in his eyes and smile. And she smiled back while moving his hand to a more reasonable focal length, where she saw, in his open palm, a shell. On the outside, it was delicate shades of sandy gold and red, and turning it over revealed the inside to be a wash in dark, iridescent color. It reminds me of us, Corby exclaimed. The outside's like you, the inside's like me, all in one shell. Cool, huh? I thought you might like it. I do, Corby, thank you. So, why do you think the color is on the inside and not the out? She thought about this for a moment. Well, maybe it's because the little animal needs to surround itself in color to be whole just like us. The color's for it, not for the rest of the ocean. Hmm. I think I should have pictures on the inside of my eyelids. That's just weird, Corby. The boy just giggled and ran back into the waves, flailing his arms and causing the gulls to scatter and complain. He jumped whale-like with his arms tucked by his side, rolled over and hit the water on his back. Isabella just shook her head, smiled and ran in after him. She bounded over one wave and slipped effortlessly into the next. Beneath the water, she glided over the wrinkly sand while the surf rolled over her head and headed for deeper waters, where the turbulence of the shore behind her, schools of tiny fish swam in shifting clouds. Fronds of seaweed waved at her as she passed, and light rained down in curtains and made the floating tendrils of her dress glisten like an underwater rainbow. She curved through the underwater garden, admiring all the shades of life, and soon spotted Corby playing King of the Underwater Hill, standing on a submerged rock, waggling his finger at a big shiny blue fish, which seemed to loot back at him with the expression that said, And? She swam above him, touched him on the shoulder, and gestured up. They broke the surface at roughly the same time, two glittering bodies in an undulating blue-gray water. Can you hear him yet? Corby asked, pushing the hair out of his eyes and squeegeeing the water from his face with the inside of his thumb and index finger. Well, they're following the shoals this way, but there's still a ways out. Want to wait there? He said, gesturing to a large rocky island, currently being showered by the remnants of a particularly large wave. Okay, she nodded and they leisurely pull themselves in that general direction. So, Corby, what would you paint on the inside of your eyelids? I don't know. Stuff? Kinda? Okay, let me, let me put it another way. What are you thinking about right now? Donuts, he said with a big grin. Isabella raised her eyebrows and looked at him down her small nose. You are not going to paint donuts on the inside of your eyelids. Well, of course not, silly. I'd always be hungry. You're always hungry. All right, one last try. So work with me here. Close your eyes. What? Close your eyes. He bobbed in the water and squeezed his eyes shut. All right, now what? Okay, Isabella continued. Tell me what you see when you think of... She paused. The bakery where we get the donuts. Can you see it? Yeah, 
What about the sandcastle we made on the beach this morning? Oh, but the waves knocked it down. It's gone. But can you see it? Well, yes, he answered somewhat reluctantly. So it's not really gone. And there you go then. You already have the whole world and everything you've ever known and everything you dreamed painted on the inside of your eyelids. Corby opened his eyes and stared intently at her as if he had heard voices from somewhere. You know, when I'm with you, I already have my rainbow around me. He said it so matter-of-factly and without sentimentality, and then just rolled over and continued with his swim to the rocks. Corby, she said softly to herself, you are a wonder, and then swam after him. After a short while, they scrambled up the rock and stopped to gaze into a rock pool on the shallow side of their little island. Tiny crustaceans skittered about when one of them dipped a hand in the shallow indentation. Isabella smiled at Corby as he carefully herded a stranded fish into his hand and gingerly carried it back to the ocean to set it free. For all his wild energy, he could be as gentle as she. She held up a tiny starfish and touched the center of the star. For those who listened very carefully, like her, it vibrated with a pure high note. She found the harmony in her heart and sang it back, and light rippled from the creature's tiny center to the end of each star tip. She laid it carefully back into the pool and stood up. Corby stepped across the rock towards her. I want to climb up there to where the waves break. You want to come? She looked past him at the pinnacle of rock behind him. You go without me. I'll join you in a bit. Okay. He gave a nod and carefully climbed the slippery stone. There was a wide, flat spot on the summit, and Corby placed one foot on the edge, his toes curling over the lip of the rock. His other leg braced, foot turned sideways behind him. He crouched down a bit and shuffled about looking for his point of balance. And then he put his arms straight out, fingers spread as far as he could, and waited for the next big wave. Beneath him, the waves gently broke against the rock that barely reached his feet. Oh, come on, he called out to the ocean. Let's play. The wind picked up and the ocean began to froth. Ahead of him, the waves began to swell as they bore down on his perch. The first broke against a rock with enough force to make it shake. A vibration Corby felt go up his legs. In his mind, he heard himself say, Uh-oh. He heard Bella's voice in his ear saying, Hang on! With a noise like thunder, the water shot up in front of him like a dark wall. It came back down on him in a shower of spray. It stung his skin a bit, but the rush of energy made him shout, Whoa! No sooner did the air clear than the next wave struck, followed by two more in quick succession like a rhythmic rainstorm. Then, as quickly as it started, the sea turned calm. He looked around for Isabella, but he was alone on the rock. Bella, he cried. Where are you? You missed it. No, I didn't, said a voice from right behind him. He spun around, almost falling off the slippery rock. And there in the space that had been empty just a moment ago stood Isabella, who grabbed him by the arm to steady him. Her flowing dress was clinging to her and now looked very much like iridescent fish scale, and her wet hair clung to her neck and shoulders. Corby looked at her with puzzlement for a moment, till a thought popped into his mind. That was you, wasn't it? All that wind and wave? She smiled back coyly. Could be. You know, that was a real drenching. But you like showers. Well, that was more like a waterfall. But you like those too. Corby couldn't keep a straight face any longer. All true, he said, and his face exploded in a big grin. He took her by the shoulders and said, that was great. You're welcome. And see, she gestured to him, you're drying out already. 
As if on cue, an enormous spray of water broke over them both, leaving them sputtering. From the water came the sound of laughter, and they turned in unison to see half a dozen or so dolphin heads bubbling, clicking, and warbling at their great joke. This apparently was dolphin humor at its apex. Isabella wasted no time in idle banter. She merely squealed and stepped off the rock and into the water with them. Corby chose the more dramatic but no less successful leap off the rock's arm flailing approach with a much bigger splash to show for it. After a greeting that involved lots of leaping, splashing, laughing, and seemingly chaotic movement from all parties present, Isabella stared down one of the dolphins. That was cheeky sneaking up on us like that. Yeah, I know, I know it was funny, but still cheeky. She followed the image in her mind and listened to the message. A surprise? Then swimming in from the distance came two more dolphins. One was just a little more than three feet long and swam just above the other and slightly off to one side. A baby! Bella squealed and dipped her head under to watch. The small dolphin swam closer to its mother who slowed her approach. Isabella sensed the distress in the baby's mind at her sudden burst of over-enthusiastic energy. Difficult as it was to contain her excitement, she damped it down to a sweet whisper in her mind. Hello, little one, she said to it. Welcome to our cove. Welcome to our world. Corby remained quietly treading water in the background with a grin on his face. Every once in a while, he dipped his head in the water for a better view. The baby had moved from slipstream position to underneath mom for nursing convenience and visibly relaxed now, the joy in his mind matching the smile on his face. Isabella felt the minds of the pod, including the mother, impressing the image of the children as safe and honorary pod members. She and Corby bobbed quietly together until the baby felt comfortable enough to investigate them and not flinch away when they reached out slowly to give it a pet. Bella backed it up with a calm, loving thoughts, and soon the infant was nuzzling them both. Soon the whole pod wanted to play, and the children agreed. Isabella still had her rainbow scales on and flitted about underwater like a tropical fish. Corby asked politely for a ride, and one of the larger dolphins allowed him to straddle its back like a horse and hold on to its dorsal fin. Soon they were all streaking around the bay, then into open water. Corby locked his legs around his mount friend and held his arms out wide as they streaked over the surface of the sea, while underneath them, Bella darted back and forth, seeming to leave a rainbow of light behind her. She, along with two of her friends, broke out of the water and leaped into the air with a spray-filled arc that Corby's dolphin sped through. Corby sensed his dolphin say, hold your breath and tuck in, just in time as it dove under then shot back up in a quick succession of leaps with the others. With a final great leap, Isabella shot straight up, spinning like a top, shedding water like a red gold wreath around her. At the apex, she threw out her arms and stopped in midair, rainbow scales flinging out in circles. She once again wore the streaming colors of purples and blues and greens and slowly descended to stand on the surface of the water. The dolphins gathered round her in a circle, breathing fountains of spray. Corby sat atop his now stationary ride, smiling at his friend. He reached down to say thank you with a pat to the side of its head. Isabella knelt down gently down the rolling water and gave each dolphin a pat and a thank you with an extra kiss for the baby. Thank you all for the wonderful time. I know you have to move on now and so do we. So until next time, good seas, good fish, and good friends. She finished off the traditional dolphin blessing, and they all chirped their happy replies. She nodded to Corby, who nodded back and closed his eyes. 
his body seemed to turn into mist, which cleared to reveal a large crow sitting on the dolphin's back. The bird cocked his head and looked at Isabella with emerald green eyes as she rose back into the air in a cloud of gossamer ribbons, her hair floating around her head like a golden crown. Corby flapped his wings and circled in close as they both flew towards the shore and on to their home beyond.